This is my presentation for the Mawson's Huts Foundation. is a non-profit organisation that looks after Mawson's Huts in Antarctica, which were built by the Australasian Antarctic Expedition in 1914. They still serve <coughs> and they're wooden structures. Um, and I got very interested in virtual heritage and using sort of full dome and immersive visualisation for looking at heritage sites and so on. So that's really useful for conservators and archaeologists and, you know, creating sort of long-lasting historical records of sites, so particularly if they're ones which are in the windiest place on sea level on Earth, i.e. Antarctica, and also huts in Antarctica, where you get catamatic blizzards blowing over winter up to 320 kilometres an hour enough to physically lift you up and throw you into the ocean, so it's a pretty extreme environment. And there's a lot to learn about operating camera equipment in you know, <laughs> 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 like yourself down. But, um, I wasn't obviously shooting there uh, in, in the middle of winter when there would be no light, so it would be pretty hopeless for your photography. Um, but over the, the weather window, which is over the summer period, and you get very fine day, it would be sort of like it is outside today, but slightly <coughs> So, and, and I'm using this sort of full dome stuff as what one, one way of exploring the environment and making kind of virtual tour or conservation sort of view of the environment, but also want to tell stories about the place and look at, you know, I'm interested in narrative drama and live action and those sorts of things. So I guess the, the moral of the story there is that one can multi-purpose the kind of types of imagery that you shoot and so on. So you don't need to think that you're just making a film for a particular audience. You can redeploy that imagery that you generate across a whole series of different platforms, such as mobile platforms, things for the small screen and things for the very, very large screen as well. So field pornography is an interesting kind of thing. I was there obviously trying to capture the highest resolution imagery of the environment um, as I could. And you, you, as I said, you've got this kind of weather window, so you've got to be really opportunistic and rush in and, and get as much coverage as you possibly can. And when I first went down there, I've been had three trips to Antarctica now. The first time I took an 8 megapixel camera with a, with a powered head, and you would typically end up taking, it would say be about 100 photographs in a circle, and then you stitch these all together using uh, something like Auto Powered Pro uh, stitching software. There's a whole variety of different software that you can use to stitch images together, and there are lots of alignment issues with it. So you typically use a panoramic head <coughs> that you can increment your, your camera moving around in a, in a lap on kind of orbit. Um, and so the, the, the images that I took for the movie that you saw at the Horizon Planetarium were, they would be about 100 photographs in each, so it ended up with uh, what you would, in some sense, say sort of 10K resolution, because it was 10,000 pixels on the side by 20,000 pixels long. And this is a, 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 what we call an equi rectangular shot. So this is a 360 degree view here, so the very far right, perhaps around to the very, to the very far left there, so roughly around the complete cylinder. I've come to the bottom of it there, and if you project it on the dome, you can see the, the, the very top there actually becomes a sort of infinitely, you know, tiny one pixel point or whatever, and that, and that plus the perspective direction. For you. So those clouds aren't actually curved in the sky there straight. But what was interesting was uh, going on the second trip and taking this camera with me, which is a, a Canon 5D Mark II, which we've got a couple of, we've got a variety of cameras, we'll go through these. And this, as opposed to 8 megapixels, is a 21 megapixel camera, so it's, it's nice high resolution. And the benefit of using this with a fisheye lens is that I could effectively take a, an image like that with four shots as opposed to 100 shots, but it was lower resolution, it's sort of around about 8K resolution, which is more than enough for dome work, but it's a hell of a lot quicker to, to go and create these sorts of things. Um, what I did was um, set up, develop this device, the, this Hurley dolly, where, um, and this is kind of an experiment which I'm, where I'm still sort of processing the images in an attempt to explore how you can generate reasonably convincing uh, and navigable or editable in different ways, explorable in different ways, uh, time-lapse imagery. With, um, when you're shooting at very high resolution with a 21 megapixel camera like this, this will only shoot one frame per second, okay? so it's good for time lapse, but no good for ultra high definition live action. Obviously, we're constrained by that, and that's why we have things like the Ladybug camera, which is a specialised live action camera. You can shoot at a much lower definition for live action, and we, so uh, 1K or 2K or something like that, but that would always look a bit fuzzy on the large dome. So what I did with this Hurley Dolly system would have managed to be the camera on a tripod and it's, it's triggered by an interferometer, which is basically a sort of programmable device which says take one frame every second and it used it or just or you can program it to take one frame every ten seconds or eight seconds or six seconds or one frame every twenty-four hours, or whatever. It just uh, it 
detect what the interval is. And then this camera would run along the tracks, and I did basically three runs um, in uh, where, where the track was placed in one position in the hut, and that would enable me to generate this pretty much this sort of near sort of full dome coverage. If you think about it, these are fish eye shots here, so that's a 180 degree sphere there, one there, one there, and if you stitch these together, you've got sort of I don't know 300 degrees or something of coverage and then one could put a synthetic camera inside that in software and then generate arbitrary views from inside that environment uh, doing time-lapse material. But of course the problem is that after each run of you doing time-lapse you've got actual movement of time during the day so things have changed a bit. But fortunately if you're in Antarctica in a cryonic environment there's no trees or leaves or not many people, it doesn't move very much. So um, I could go away with that to some degree. So that was a kind of interesting experiment in process, progress. So here I am in my uh, uh, Antarctic finery um, with, uh, with Faz, the builder, um, and we were uh, using really high-tech equipment like you know, pieces of wood propped up on rocks uh, to run this device called the Hurley Dolly, uh, which is this device here, which uh, I became very good friends with the doctor on this trip, and he also happened to be an engineer, and a kind of mad engineer, where we were both great enthusiasts for the tip shop. Um, and where you can make things for uh, zero, zero budget enterprise, you know, filming sort of stuff. You can either spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on dolly systems or, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars going to buying these things, or you can just have a mate who's an engineer and build it in the shape yourself out of it from the tip shop. So that's what we did, and, and this piece is powered by, this is powered by a bulb battery and uh, three broken Chinese drills which plug into the back of each other and that enables us to cover about six meters in up to about 24 hours so it can do a full diagonal cycle of coverage um, using battery power and so on. And this is that's standard power television resolution and then we have, I think this is 720p and then this is 1080p HD resolution, normal rectangular and then we move up to a 2K image here and then 3.6K, this is the resolution that you're getting at Verizon Pantera. And the gold standard these days is 4K or 096. So it's a, this is this, this green square here, so it's significantly greater. And then I produce all, all nitrogen experiments anyway in producing stuff at 8K, which is only runs in the Pantera in Beijing and the current Hong Kong currently. And that's incredibly time consuming to produce 8K because it's really important to think about how many zillions of times more uh, this is, and then I was shooting something 10K, which is this insanely high resolution uh, that nobody can project, but you can select sort of interesting content from. So that's how it scales up, and each time there's really a sort of order of magnitude more processing and complexity and things like that as you move up here. So this is why it's very, very time consuming. The uh, uh, seven minute uh, processing time movie that you saw yesterday was 220 gigabytes of data just for that movie for seven minutes. So you're really looking at uh, potentially terabytes of data just in the runtime movie itself, depending upon whether you're using target files or JPEGs or PNGs as your source file format. Um, so whether these are compressed or uncompressed formats, generally you want a fairly uncompressed kind of format. Um, and that, say that's multi gig, you know, hundreds of gigabytes, may only be a fraction of the material that you produce whilst you're shooting. Because, you know, what's your shooting ratio going to be? In Antarctica, I was very happy with a one to one shooting ratio because you're only there for a very short time and everything kind of counts. Okay, so there's none of this, you know, we do 60 to 1 kind of stuff or, or 10 to 1 or anything like that. Well, you could do 10 to 1, but then you've got, you know, maybe petabytes of material that you might be dealing with, with lots of storage issues. This is just an example of, of the sort of coverage that we're getting. I mean, we, uh, you're familiar with a lot of this stuff now, <coughs> the full frame uh, fisheye image. And the difference between the material that I was shooting recently and uh, the stuff previously is that this is um, all uh, time lapse, <laughs> motion 